Welcome to Analytics with Nax. This is another video in the end to end series where I'm going to deep dive into Power Query. If you want to explain what is Power Query, it is the ETL part of Power BI. ETL stands for Extract, Transform and Load. Basically, it is used to transform your data. Right now, you might have started working in Power BI and most of the time you might have encountered like this data is not aligned with your modeling or reports. So you need to transform in such a way that it will align with your modeling or report. So Power Query used to transform your data. That is what we are going to see as part of this video. So what are the topics I'm going to cover as part of this video? I will start with introduction explaining Power Query, Power Pivot and Power View and Excel transformations, common transformations and SQL equivalent transformation. Basically there is no Microsoft documentation says about this transformation specific to Excel or this is common or SQL. For your understanding, if the source data is from Excel, mostly these are the some of the tra transformation is possible. Okay, that is what I mentioned here and split derive column remove column everything can be done even append merge group by everything can be done irrespective of the sources right so but these are some of the common transformations we will do then why I mentioned SQL those who are familiar with SQL right those who are working in SQL uh, language that is database querying they are aware of these things append is nothing but union or union all merges left right inner join and group by so these are some of the transformations that uh, you are already working in SQL. That is why I categorize these transformation. So all these transformation can be done either from Excel database or any other source system. But for your understanding, make your simpler, I have categorized like this. Once this phase one is done, we will move on to the explaining the business scenarios that covers all these topics. Then other topics related to power query like data preview how do you handle nulls and blanks what do you mean by query folding then finally we will end up with giving some tips and tricks that will help you to understand more about power query so this is what the agenda of this uh, video let's begin with some notes. so not all files are uploaded I try to upload as much files as possible as part of the description so this video or whatever I take it's part of this channel is only for your understanding practice with your own data set right so this is what I want to convey and this channel contains a free content worth thousand dollars or sound five thousand INR which covers the Power BI, SQL and also some of the topics in MSBI like it covers SSIS, SSAS, SSRS and also I touched upon Azure as well. So please utilize this contents, share this channel with friends and colleagues. Let's begin our today's topic. What is Power Query, Power Pivot and Power View? How they are related to Power BI? If you are familiar with Power BI and if you search in Google, you often uh, come across these terminologies Power Query, Power Pivot, Power BI and you always confuse with that if you are new to the business intelligence world. In this video, I will explain what are those tools and how it is related. Let's jump into action. We are familiar with this uh, architecture. Uh, Power BI consists of uh, Power BI desktop and uh, it contains Power BI services and mobile access and nowhere the architecture of Power BI is uh, these three tools Power Pivot, Power uh, Query or Power View. Let's see what is those history of it, these tools. Basically all these three tools Power Query, Power Pivot, Power View are came as an Excel add-ins and each tool solves its own purpose when we start with Power Query, it is used to perform ETL, that is Extract, Transform and Load operations. Let's see more on this in next slide. 
and it uses the M language. It stands for mashup language. Basically, it is a power query extension language. They want to shorten form of it. So mashup means uh, maybe uh, it's called uh, many purpose. So they named it as M language. So power query uses M language to perform ETL. And power pivot, it is used to perform modeling or create relationship between tables. So when you create relationship, it internally creates a structure or data architecture like cubes, SSAS, tabular model cubes that stores your data in a column store engine. It requires some kind of modeling. That is what the power pivot is meant for. To query this model, we need a language called DAX. This is what a power pivot is all about. And you have a power view. It's used to visualize data in charts and graphs or maps and uh, some other formats. So this is the purpose of these three tools and all these tools came as an Excel add-ins. So how it is related to Power BI? Let's see. Let's see more about Power Query. So Power Query, if you see here, we have a data in many places like Excel, database, web. As I said, uh, Power BI does, Power BI can able to bring all the data. It's not the Power BI does that. Basically, an underlying layer is Power Query. So Power Query brings the data from different sources and it can do some uh, <coughs> transformation. Like you have data from customer data from Excel and you have that phone numbers in database, you need to merge it or you need to remove certain rows from the Excel top rows, bottom rows, remove blank rows or you have a different. So these kind of transformation can be done in Power Query. So this Power Query uh, engine will does that purpose, right? And gives you a data in a table format because Power BI is a column store, I mean column store database, it requires data in a table format. So it transforms the data into table. Even you can get the data from JSON format. Uh, so these kind of transformation. This is what uh, basically the ETL stands for. Extracts the data from different sources, transform it to your uh, format that is suitable for Power BI then gives you in a table format, uh, database world, but here it loads into Power BI itself, okay? So this is Power Query all about. Power Pivot, if you see uh, familiar with this, uh, we have a model. So creating a relationship will give you a model and creating your measures, columns, all these things are part of Power Pivot only. Let's see it here. So this is the summary like uh, power query does your transformation and your power pivot as i said in the initial slide power pivot creates a cube cube is nothing but your data structure uh, that stores the data in a more compressed format then there comes a power view so the power view is a combination of all your maps and question and answer charts everything okay these are the uh, parts of it. So you are familiar with uh, these three terminologies, ETL, modeling, and visualization. So if you are spending most of the time here, if you have a proper model in place, 80% of the development process happens here. And your querying or I mean viewing part is very simple. You need to spend only 20%. But if your modeling part or your querying part is not so perfect, then you are uh, you can't able to have a good visualization or you can't able to solve your purpose of your business requirement so please focus on this uh, part okay your modeling part especially okay uh, let's uh, try to explore this uh, options in uh, power bi desktop what is power query power pivot and power map how so that we can correlate whatever we have seen right now Let's head towards our Power BI desktop. So when you are uh, launching Power BI desktop, you will have a page like this and you have reports. So let's try to correlate these three things. So the transform data is nothing but your Power Query Editor. If you see the description tooltip, use the Power Query Editor to connect, prepare and transform data. As the description indicates, it's used to transform 
your data so click on it and uh, you will get a screen like this right power query editor so here what you can do so this is the um, page you are familiar with if you are watching my previous video you have list of tables and you can do the certain transformation you can split column match queries join append queries or remove certain rows and you can uh, navigate through the steps all these things we are familiar with so these are the this is the place where you you do the actual etl operations this is what your power query is all about then what is uh, your um, power uh, pivot so power pivot once you uh, do the transformation all your tables listed here and here is the modeling tab where you create the relationship this is already created uh, if you are not uh, create a relationship it, these three tables are not related there won't be any lines uh, between these two tables which indicates a relationship so you need to create a relationship using manage relationship or drag and drop this is uh, uh, one of the important part of your modeling along with that you can also create a measure and calculated columns these are also part of your power pivot operation only and finally we have power view where you can create uh, visualizations maps other things already we have created uh, certain visuals here so these are part of your power view so when you kick started your career or you are learning power bi no need to uh, mess up with all these things this is just for your understanding or uh, the history of uh, power bi so then what is power bi power bi nothing but it bundles all these tools as a single powerful business intelligence tool so you no need to worry about whether you are in power query or power view or power bi so basically you need to understand the power bi combination of these two tools and you microsoft doesn't want you to confuse with uh, different tools so it bundles and gives us a powerful business intelligence tool that is what power bi we're going to see how to transform excel data using a power query editor if your source system or you are having a data in excel or any csv files then you need to do certain transformations before it fit into power bi basically the data in excel won't be in a proper format you have some uh, headers at the top or in between you have some rows and you need to do some unpivoting those options you need to do before uh, it suits for the reporting let us try to explore some of the basic transformation that most of the excel sources will have so these are uh, some of the common transformations this is very simple but uh, to flow to follow the flow i'm try retaking this uh, small transformations usually you will have uh, end up with some of the header rows you need to remove it and then you need to promote some of the head columns as headers then there will be some gaps fill up and down option will be used obviously you need to do the change of data type if it is a time or date calculations to work you need to set the date field as date data type then there is something like unpivoting so these are the things we are going to see in this video let us try to see the data and what scenarios you will have to use these options so as i said before excel is not straightforward it's not uh, having a structured data some sometime most of the people don't maintain properly so they have uh, some headers it is not we cannot say it's proper because uh, to have a proper understanding in the excel this is fits good in excel but not for reporting right so that is what i want to make now i want to remove these two rows to have these uh, data to be in my report so for that i need to re remove top end rows 
and in this case uh, like I have a category and item most of the people don't want to fill again and again that creates a uh, readability of this Excel uh, difficult so they maintain like this so this jeans denim also belongs to cash flow here so how you can handle this but as a reporting tool it requires it will process row by row okay so if this row is considered as null so you need to fill this one before uh, it go to the power bi reporting purpose and the data over here is like a budget uh, for each location as you might aware we are um, understanding the power bi for a business scenario garment business he has three locations and for these locations he is allocating some budget monthly okay and he is using this data over here and what is the exact issue using this data if you have a data like that how what is the difficulty in analyzing let me explain it in next video for now what i'm going to do is i will take this data and i will convert all these things into single column that is chennai bangalore hyderabad will be, location will be here and here i will have month month column will have january february march and the amount will be here so you, i will convert this into three columns why we need to do it let us see it in my next video but to convert this uh, columns into rows is called unpivoting without wasting time let us try to jump into a demo i have this uh, power bi now let us try to get this uh, data so let me load all this for uh, let me not load the customer info so each uh, table requires some kind of transformation so i need to go for transform data let us go for it okay now we got uh, these three tables let us try to transform the first table uh, the data table uh, as we seen in the excel we got uh, some top rows to be removed then only these rows can be usable now you see the data type for these columns also text since uh, it it cannot detect right now what is the data underneath it's try to sense from the top rows and everything is considered as uh, your text right whereas for this also so you see here it is dated but it doesn't detect it because it contains all combination it contains text it contains some number it contains date so it got confused okay so first uh, thing is like we need to remove this row okay and for that remove rows okay remove top rows how many rows you want to delete one okay you might have asked me why it is one because here i need to remove two rows so power bi by default if this is merged uh, columns so by default the first column this column is considered as a uh, column header so this naga garments went into header name other columns are empty since it is matched okay that is the thing so if it is not matched then this only came to i mean it went to that column header then these things will have some other columns forget about that now right now you just see how it has uh, read the data uh, i need to remove one rows in this case so just mention one here that's it now what you need to do is after you remove the unnecessary rows then you need to promote it as set is so this one this is the option for uh, uh, to promote all this uh, row first row as a header use first row as header and you can see it here for each action i did removing first row removing uh, promoting the uh, first row as header everything comes as an action here this is very important thing you need to understand now right from the first step uh, how i navigated 
all these things are getting recorded you can delete any one of the step in between or you can move the step so it is so powerful uh, in this case the power query editor let's try to navigate it so this source is nothing but i pointed to that uh, excel and from there what i am doing i'm navigating navigating is nothing but i'm choosing the particular sheet this is navigating then what i did the power bi itself will uh, promote all the rows as header okay that is what it uh, as i said this particular um, row it has read and it is promoted as an header so it this is the step for that then uh, it has um, changed the data type like if you see uh, here uh, in, in promotion promoted headers you can see the abc123 meaning it can have a text or numbers whereas in change data type it converts everything as a text then these are the custom transformations we did we removed top rows then promoted as headers if i don't want this step what happens i'm removing this step just click on this cross then i promoted first row as header right then that step is deleted um so i can roll back to my previous stage if i delete those two steps then i can revert to this particular uh, state that is in this state i don't have the column headers so i can go back to the steps this is somewhat very powerful when you are uh, troubleshooting or uh, creating your uh, transforming your data yeah so now again i'm reverting back so use first row as header so as soon as you do that it detects the change uh, it detects as i said uh, we didn't do anything change type one so it detects try to detect the data type and you see here this becomes date data type so this is point number one uh, that we have removed rows and uh, we have uh, promoted as headers let us try to solve another problem in excel so here also we have uh, this uh, two things are uh, considered as header so let us try to promote it and power bi will um, automatically uh, detect it as data type now here in this case we need to uh, fill this gap right so for that we have option called fill up or down in this case we need to fill down okay so sometimes what happens some totals or grand total they will put it here only i mean all these things belongs to casual via uh, in this if you if they have data here we need to fill it up so in this case we need to fill it down so let us go fill down okay now we got the data you have to understand for each row you need to have the data power bi can't able to understand since if you filter this one it should belongs to this category we need to display based on the column value that is why we need to fill all these gaps so these are common uh, excel related operations now in this case uh, another important problem here is like pivoting and unpivoting now what i'm doing let us try to promote as headers if you are unpivoting this you will not get this column you need to have a column header here then only you need to go for unpivoting so that column headers will become the your data so let us try to promote it okay now this i want to unpivot so select the column okay or you can have multi other columns as well in this case i have only one column select whatever columns you don't want to unpivot meaning the columns you want to uh, convert it as uh, rows just uh, ignore that select those do do not want to unpivot click on this then unpivot other columns okay what happens now there you go that is the magic so for chennai you have a budget for 12 months okay and for bangalore you have starting from january february march you have the data here then keep it as uh, month whatever you want this is budget so this is how you need to uh, convert your transform your data 
so that uh, it will fit into Power BI so that you the queries you write becomes very less complex. Otherwise, you need to suffer a lot. We're going to see a trick about how to split a column data in Power BI. If you're puzzled what it means by that, let's jump into a demo and see interaction. Before adding to Power BI, I just want to explain the data what it is. So you see here, we need to have a split of uh, each column based on certain conditions. First of all, in customer name, I don't want the title. I need only the name. In case of customer ID, there is a IND SIR SRI. It's like a country code followed by some ID number. I don't want the country code. I want one the number and in third column landline which contains a country code followed by a state code and number in some cases we don't find those state std code so how to split i need this number okay and in final case that's our id proof which contains different id proofs and followed by the id proof number i need only those numbers so like this, we have a lot of scenarios in our data. So I have taken this simple example to understand how to split the data in Power BI. Let's see it in action. I've imported this data and for the people, those who don't know how to promote this column, this is the first column and I want to promote it as header. Just click on that option that will Give me my name header name now first example so the logic is if i found a dot okay i need to split for that click on this by delimiter this is one of the delimiter we can we are identified then we will go by that power be automatically detected we'll go by that default option each occurrence means if you have multiple dots in between here that will split another column but in our case it is only one dot so we'll have only two columns here there you go we got our desired output and you find some small space there after dot you have a space then name so that space also appearing here to remove that click on this and go to transform and format and trim so your space is removed that is our first example heading to our uh, second example here somewhat tricky like uh, after we found like um, um, first three characters we need uh, to remove these first three characters and keep other characters for that click that one and go to split columns and you have a uh, number of characters okay click on that so you need to choose once as far left as possible you keep three so first three characters will be left out and it will be split there you go so it changed the data type to integer if you don't want then close click on close this one I mean you can delete the step so it will become text so now we got our second output I will say it as uh, customer ID and we can delete this column i will take it later okay now coming back to a third example in this case we need the rightmost okay for that we need to find the rightmost space okay so click on that click on that column split column and by delimiter you say like um, space okay space then you say like rightmost delimiter okay there you go you got your desired output again you close this change type because if it is number it will take that one so your number is uh, split into i mean you get the final number whatever you want the landline numbers the fourth example is a uh, little tricky like you have a other card here and you have number and there will be some symbols here there is no uh, specific format you can do it so basically what you need is like you want the number out of the entire column 
okay that is the end objective so power bi provides that option click on this column then go to split column then by non digit to digit okay just press this one you see the magic there you go so you got all the numbers excluding all the options i hope it was clear guys to summarize uh, the final part so you see this is the very tricky part the other card hyphen you don't find any proper delimiter to split but you find like you need to take away the numbers from this text so that is what it did exactly okay how to derive a column in power bi or uh, if you're looking for how to create a column based on condition then this is the right video for you let's jump into a demo i have already imported a file in power bi from the excel so it contains two simple columns category name and item name now i am going to show two quick trick that you need to combine these two columns and i need to derive some other column let's see the first example to combine these two columns so for that go to add column then click on custom column then give a proper name category product detail something like that okay so double click on this done column and in order to combine two textual columns i mean text data type columns the ambassador symbol is used so in between i'm going to give some character as uh, some hash hash something like that okay to distinguish and press ambassador once again and this item name so what indi it indicates is like category name combined with item name with some formatting i mean in between the category name item name i want hash hash okay that's the story now you got it so casual wear hash hash jeans lewis so that's so simple let's see another example i want to create a conditional column okay based on this item name what is the condition so if you see here this lewis d name jara these items are considered as branded and this legging t-shirt shirt those things are considered as unbranded so i want to derive a column based on a condition like if i found some brand then it should be branded if i don't find any brand then it is unbranded how to create a condition based on that okay let's see with an example and the tricky part is here you find uh, like a hyphen over uh, the one of the logic i thought is like if you use a hyphen uh, if the data contains hyphen then it is branded but if you see here hyphen is over here so what we need to do space hyphen space so if you find the data like this that is considered as branded and if you don't find space hyphen space then it is unbranded that's your logic let's see how to do it for this i need to go for conditional column Previously, we did custom column. Now, this time, it's a conditional column. Let's see. So, item name contains space hyphen space. Okay. Then, output is branded. So, this is a very simple condition. If it is not this case, what it should be. So, put a else case and branded. So if you have multiple cases like this, keep adding the class like this. I don't want it right now. So it's branded. If it contains space, iPhone space, then it, otherwise it's unbranded. There you go. It's very simple, guys. So branded, unbranded, it is exactly classified. So I will rename it as is branded. Yes, that is how to reorder columns in Power BI. And another trip is choose to remove some unwanted columns in your Power BI. These two tips will make your uh, usability of your Power BI reports easier in the sense like you have hundreds of columns, but you are using very few columns in your reports. 
and that will create confusion. So to remove those columns that is not used, that is the purpose of this video, how to do it. Let's see it in action. So I have uh, this report and uh, I'll just show you what are the columns present here. You have a location, customer name, and you have a lot of columns, you see. Uh, sales date, sales order, all the columns. There are around 30 to 40 columns. But for my reporting, I need very few columns like location, item name, and in this report, you have item name, item amount. Only three columns I need. So once I have only three columns in place, I can do these reports, but I don't want unnecessary columns here. How to delete those? Let us see it in action. By the way, if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, do subscribe this channel to get tips like this. Back to our topic. Now, I need location and item name. I need to find item name. So, I'm just running fast. But it is, it's hidden somewhere. Come on. So item name, there you go. So what I need to do is like click on it, transform and move towards the beginning. Whatever columns you need, just move it to the beginning. Then I need item amount. That will is my measure. This one also, right click to have to the beginning. So once I have all these columns in place, so next, as you thought, we need to delete it. So right click and removing will do and right click and shift will delete some of the columns like this, whatever I want. But I'm going to show you a quick real trick in Power BI. So whatever columns you need, select those columns, only these three columns I need and right click, remove other columns. That's some magic guys. So you removed all other columns that is not required for your reporting. Then go to here, close and apply. Now you see a lot of columns here will be moved away and your report still exists. There you go. So I need all the columns whatever required for my reports. My report is still working. I hope you guys like this. How to append or combine multiple data into a single table. If you are familiar with SQL, then you might have done union or union all operation for combining two different data sets into single data set. So that is what we are going to do it right now. Let's see it in an example. Um, we are exploring a Power BI using this business scenario, Naga Garments. If a person is owning a shop or a garments like this, and he wants to build a dashboard, and what are the different business scenarios he will encounter, and when he use appropriate options in Power BI. That is what we are exploring in this series. So this Naga Garments, uh, so branches in Chennai, Bangalore, and Hyderabad. Now, they have introduced a new store in small town where all these metropolitan cities are connected by a single point of sale system. Whereas this uh, new small town doesn't have any internet or any other uh, some facilities. So they maintain the data only in Excel. At the end of each day, they send it to via email to the business owners and they will they have to match the point of sales data along with this uh, small town data so in this case they need to use append or union operation to combine the data to analyze in a single data set let's see it in a demo so we already have this uh, um, dashboard built from a pos system over here now we need to uh, get the data from the Excel that is from the uh, small town table. Then we need to append these two table. Then we get the location information here so that we can analyze that information together in this dashboard. Let's see how to do it. 
let's go to uh, navigate that file and I stored in Excel so it's uh, called data let us transform the data so now the thing is like you need to combine these two data and some people if you ask me like uh, why can't we have uh, data in two different places so now you previously you see the dashboard built based on this if you have your data over here you need to create another dashboard or another fields that sales amount it is separated you uh, understand it so the sales price for this location is different and you cannot analyze with this uh, uh, same data in the same data level so that is why you need to combine it so along with this data you can also analyze uh, with other filters as well that is the main important thing you need to combine in, in a single place so how to do that so there is option called append queries go to here and this one is append queries as new this i would suggest if you are creating if you are not build a dashboard then you can go for it append queries as new so that it will create a new table from that you can create the dashboard if already you have built the dashboard then i would suggest go for this append queries go to here then concatenate rows from two tables into single table so maybe data table to append okay sorry so which table based on which table you have um, built a dashboard click on that table then go to append queries then choose data table to append so this data will be appended here So now the data is appended to ensure that go and check the data here. Now you see the Suram paid data has came here. Earlier there was only three locations. Now this data also came here. Now you no need to load this particular data in your uh, reporting side. So just click on disable unload. I mean if you uncheck it it will not load but it will load here okay that will not load in your report side so I'm just clicking close and apply there you go so once you just pressing on uh, uh, I mean uh, apply then your new location is came into place now the business owner the garment shop owner can analyze as soon as possible he got that excel data into here the new location this is how you can uh, uh, keep incrementing your locations and your dashboard existing dashboard won't get affected so this is one of the important factor you need to append your data to append uh, two data sets the thumb rule is like uh, in both the data sets the column should be the same I mean the names everything what I mean by here is this is from the point of sales it contains sale date receipt number order type name item name and when you are getting this data from the file or any other source system the columns in this table and this table should be same before uh, m appending then the orders you need to ensure the column name everything is same okay and assume like you are getting something like bill number and before that append step you need to rename it uh, always uh, you can go here and uh, change the uh, steps so if you want to rename it something you can add some rename column then append it so just this is for your understanding the column names in both the tables if you are appending should be the same and one last point I want to highlight is like this append will do a union all 
meaning those who are familiar with SQL, they might be aware of this term union all, will retain the duplicates, meaning like uh, you have uh, some record over here having a similar record, so 06BL2. So this union all will keep the duplicates. So in order to remove those duplicates, after that, we need to do a final step after append, okay? Select all the columns, then click on remove duplicates. Where is that? Hold on, you can right click, then remove duplicates. That will remove duplicates. That will make your union operation. So for this business scenario, there won't be a chances of uh, duplicate, um, but assume like uh, if you have a, in your business scenario to know about the concept, what append will do, okay? That is why I highlighted this one. This channel contains a free content worth $1,000 or $75,000 INR. So kindly use this uh, free content available to you which covers SSIS, SSAS and Power BI as well as those who are looking for career guidance, job change. I have a separate playlist for them as well. So please utilize this content, share this channel with friends and colleagues so that someone will be utilizing these contents. How to join tables or if you are looking for match option in Power BI, this is the video for you. If you are from SQL background, you are familiar with how to do left, right and inner joins. Just continue watching to know how to implement in Power BI. Let's explore our business scenario. We have built a dashboard for Naga Garments. Now he is maintaining a supply information. He got some uh, uh, request like where are my supplier branches located? meaning like he wants to know what are the different branches his supplier is maintaining. Uh, for that, he got a new table. So supplier branches. So this is where you need to use joins, meaning like you have uh, information in two different places. You need to combine it into a single place or join it. That is where you use joins. Which join to use? Let us explore in next slide. So this is a simple example. You have uh, the circle, left hand side circle is supplier and the right hand side circle is your supplier branch. And you need supplier along with address, that is address from the branch, only those who are available in both tables. That is, you are, have a, some list of suppliers here and some, it can be a subset or superset. So these suppliers, both suppliers exist in both, then you need to go for inner join. On another hand, if you have uh, suppliers here, I need only those, I need complete set of uh, suppliers from my left table and along with the address, okay? If the address does not exist or the supplier does not exist, ignore them. That is what you need to go for, left outer join. That is, you need all suppliers along with address, even supplier not exist in supplier address table. Then you need to use left outer join. Let's see it in a demo. Let me pull um, the supplier information. So this is my supplier table that uh, the Naga Garments is maintaining. And I got this information, supplier address, where are the branches located. Just transform it so that we can use the joints. Now you see a supplier and supplier address here. Let's create a new table using a join, okay? So for that, you need to go for match queries. Let's explore other options. Match query as new, okay? This will uh, create a new table for me. I will go for it. So this is uh, 
joining I need to promote this one as header okay now you see I have a supplier information supplier address information for each of the supplier name I want uh, the location so one stop shop here over here it contains two locations for a second supplier it was three locations so those information should be available in this table that is our end objective let us see it in inner join match query as new whatever join you want to perform you want to go for it then choose this column the common column between these two tables choose the second table then here it's a supplier name here it can be anything so you know which column to join so choose this one here I want to go for so selection matches three of five rows of a first table let's see what so output okay so the one of the important concept you see here is the output is not your immediate uh, result the joint table here for each row if you click on this one it returned another table inside this uh, each uh, record okay so you see for treasury shop i we already seen uh, there are uh, three locations okay how to expand this table and moreover uh, you see here out of five suppliers here i got only three suppliers that is one stop shop treasury shop and suited supply so only these uh, suppliers are available as uh, the branch locations so i got only these three suppliers name so that is what inner join will do both should match in both table it should exist so only this part is available here so how to expand this just uh, go to this column header that is two headed error mark click on this then ignore this one if you are uh, using this one this will have the the supplier address dot company name supplier address dot branch location so ignore that one now i want only branch location that's all okay i i don't want other columns now you see now that table is expanded for each supplier i'm getting multiple rows because the address over here for this supplier is two i mean the branches for this guy for this uh, supplier there is two for uh, suited supply there is four so i got for suited supply four branch location this is what your inner join is but whereas uh, i need uh, all the suppliers in my base table all the suppliers only address exist then it uh, the branches exist then it will show my branches otherwise uh, it will show null okay let's see how to do it again i will go matches queries as new then click on this column supplier address again i'll choose this by company name then choose left outer okay now your table is again a table but this time you get all the suppliers from this table left table and uh, you see what are the matchings last time we didn't see anything for perfect products let us see what is there inside there is nothing this table is empty because there is no matching records in this supply address the for uh, perfect products there is no information in this uh, table the joining table so you will not get any record let's expand and show branch location okay so for uh, so it now the left join has given me all the supplier information from the my first table and whatever the matching records that matching branches in my second table and those who don't have the branches it becomes null so this is what uh, join is all about you can implement in power bi if you like this video share and subscribe to the channel and comment below for queries how to use group by 
option in Power BI or Power Code Editor. This is similar to your SQL group by query if you are from database background. Let's see where we will use this group by using our business scenario. The Naga Garments business is owning a garment shop and he has built a dashboard. And for him, a lot of questions uh, arises, and we are trying to solve those questions using uh, Power BI. So this time, he has got supply-wise total branches. So in my previous video, we have seen how to get uh, the joints, how to use the joints uh, to combine the data from two different uh, tables. So now after that. Um, join a single table output will be derived from that he wants to have uh, some of um, how many branches for each supplier that can be achieved by group by if you haven't watched my video just watch my previous video so that you will understand what I'm trying to say and if you haven't subscribed the channel yet hit the button right now to know the tips and tricks like this in future Let's see it in a demo how to implement group by in Power BI. So these are two tables and we merged and uh, do, did the inner join and we have derived this one. Now he wants to see uh, each supplier wise what is uh, his total. So this can be done in analysis in the reports but in all sometimes we may end up in granularity issues like uh, this supply is a dimension as we know uh, in star schema we need to have uh, one supplier per record so if it is directly connected to a fact table then you cannot have duplicates in your supplier so you need to have a single entry over here so you there might be some other scenario like uh, you will have a duplicates of information and you want you use group bus you use group bus you use group provide uh, duplicates or you make unique of your dimension tables let's see in this example so if whatever column you want to group by you can select uh, either of them or you can select single column okay let me show it first by single column group by then it can be any rows new column name is like um, number of uh, branches then it's count of rows you can do other aggregation if you have something like sales amount or some other commission amount uh, anything so it it's not a numeric now we need to go for count of rows just click on it so you can see it is uh, unique now the supplier name then you got 234 so this is what very simple to use uh, group by option now let me show with the multiple columns so if you want to do group by select these two columns then uh, use group by then group by these two columns will come so same option you can say number of branches since the phone number is same or it, it doesn't matter so based on these different groups you can have a number of branches so this is what a group by will do guys if you want to uh, group by and do some aggregations you can still do that otherwise you can ignore this if you want a unique columns like this you can delete this column if you don't want if you like this video share and subscribe to the channel comment below for queries do remember that data is your asset How to sort a month name or day of a week chronological order in Power BI. If you are struggling with uh, ordering your uh, month name, uh, like instead of uh, it should be from January, February, March, it comes with alphabetical order, like April comes first uh, and uh, August comes second, something like that, then this is the video for you.
Let's see it in a demo how to fix it. So this is what I'm saying about. So we have uh, this dashboard built and uh, in our previous uh, video we have built um, day of a week which day of a week uh, the sales is um, uh, doing performing well <clears throat> and here in this uh, video I have built a month name but this is not the way we need to see it usually it should be from January February March uh, it should be chronological similarly this is the issue with day of a week as well so how to fix it before that if you haven't subscribed yet hit the button right now to know tips and tricks like this in future the solution is very simple let me show it in excel how to do it uh, I, i'm trying to explain the logic basically you have this uh, day of a week for day of a week you need to have this numbering okay it should be zero one two three four and assign the sort property of this column to this so that visually we will see this one internally the order will happen based on this column that is what the trick is similar for the month so for each month we need to generate one uh, uh, ordering column and internally power bi will uh, order based on this column but while displaying it will display only this so how to do it we can't do anything over here just go to transform we need to create two explicit columns one for month order another for day of a week order okay it is taking a while bear with me guys come on yes so we have a month name here and uh, you have a, a sealed date copy i don't want this right now so we have month name and day of week for that we need to create a order column okay so we will create a duplicate copy okay one for month order another one for day order two duplicate copies okay and first one because i cannot derive anything from here it becomes a text okay so i need to get it from the sale date which is having a date field here so i will say it as month order okay and this one as um, day order just renaming it after copying so for this right click transform and go to month click on month okay that will give me the number of the month okay march means one january means first like that okay you can see here you can load more so it will list me 12 months that's perfect so this is the column we are derived for this column similarly for day order right click transform day day of a week okay that is uh, from zero to six so let us quickly check it yes zero means uh, monday six means sunday so in this order okay now we have just derived these two columns we have never set the sort properties here we can back to check let's close and apply that will take a few seconds okay now which column we want to sort so month name we want to sort right click on the month name column okay then go to sort by column sort by what you need to do as i said in our excel i want to sort by month order okay now you see this chart will reflect based on the chronological order january february march april may that is what our intended output is that's a magic guys and similarly for this what we need to do the column name in the x-axis is day of a week click on the day of a week go to sort by column 
and click on day order that we have derived then once again the magic monday tuesday wednesday thursday okay so this is how you need to set a chronological order for your month name or day of week if you guys like this video share and subscribe to the channel and comment below for queries how to find age from birth date column in power bi or power query we are exploring power bi for a business naga garments and for this business the business owner is trying to get answers for his different uh, business scenarios today he got a question like what is my customer base meaning he wants to understand whether his customers are kids youth mid age people and elderly people so he wants to get this answer how you will get it so basically he this can be achieved in two step process he has a birth date as his uh, pos system captures this birth date so from this he has to derive age this is step 1 and from the age he can able to derive this category this is considered as bucket of values bin of values or range of values based on that he wants to create some um, age group okay so in this video we're going to see about a uh, first step that is creating a age from birth date if you haven't subscribed this channel yet hit the button right now to know the tips and tricks like this in future let's jump into a demo so we got uh, data here uh, having a customer id and a sale date we got a birth date as well so the step one is to create age from this birth date so let us duplicate this we are in power query editor that is transform data so right click on this column then duplicate a column so we will get um, a new column bear with me guys it was too slow okay now we got a column so do we need to have any coding to write basically the age is nothing but the current date minus your birth date how many years you have that is what your age is calculated right so this is the basic logic behind that for that you no need to write any coding power bi has option internally as gui let's see how to do it once you copy that column go to add column then date you have option called age so will that directly create your age no let's see what it does so the age column gives me the duration it's a new data type you see the data types here this is a text this is number similarly the time uh, symbol indicates it's a duration data type okay which gives you the year month and your hours minutes seconds everything together considered as a decimal so first step is to convert it as a duration okay i mean uh, from the date you need to choose age then once you convert it as duration then click on this what you want so you want as a total years right you want age so choose total years now you got years with some decimal so he is going to uh, get 24 years in another one month or in few months so that is why it's, it is 23.9 so we usually want to see it is rounded off right so now go to here then transform then you need to choose rounding then choose round up or down you need to choose round down so now you see 24.99 will become 24 only instead of 25 okay that is what guys so it is so simple to summarize you need to copy the birth date column then choose that column then go to add column considered as age 
then it will give you a new duration column then this duration you need to choose this total years then the total years once again will lead you to rounding off to round down that's all it's three step process that's all guys uh, we have derived age as a first step then in my next video we will see how to create age bucket on how to derive age group in power bi and if you are looking for how to create range of values or group of values in power bi this is the video for you we are exploring power bi using a business scenario naga garments the garments owner having a lot of business questions and he is trying to find answers using a power bi today he got a question like he wants to know his customer base whether uh, his customers are kids youth mid age people or elderly people to know this he need, he has got only the birth date so the step one of this process is to get the age for the customers we have derived the age in my previous video. and today we are creating a buckets a bins of values or range of values let's see it in a demo if you are haven't subscribed this channel yet hit the button right now to know the tips and tricks like this in future let's jump into demo in our previous video we have derived age so let us not have this age as a summarization just remove that do not summarize as it should not be uh, summed up as i mentioned in my previous videos so i want to see the age wise how much quantity sold okay if you see the data like this you, okay so I'll just try to increase the um, x axis uh, font so that you can view it better so fine so now if you can see uh, the age wise analysis now you can't able to analyze much from it i mean you, you, you can see like there is a good uh, customer base from the age group of 20 to 30 42 uh, I mean from the 60 50 to 60s it is good but just we want to uh, create age group or uh, bucket dimension so that it will be analyzed much better so for that what we need to do is just create a bucket to create a bucket based on certain column just click on this age then right click this option called new group so this will prompt you uh, one new dialog box where you can specify a list of values and there uh, you can categorize those values into different categories let's it's taking long i don't know why let's see there you go so now you can give a name now i don't want bins instead i will go for list so this will give me all the values all the ages over here okay so i want to create four groups so that is between uh, 0 to 13 it will be group one so just select those first group of values then click on group okay now i just don't want to type i'm poor in writing so let's copy and paste so this is group one then i need to choose another list of values so it will be till 30s so 20 to 30 20 to 30 then group here i want to choose the give the name as youth so here on top you need to give the name from 30 to 55 i think choose then group then give the name as um, mid-age people Be with me understand 
then greater than that i'll say elderly okay there is some people with more than 100 years that's good <laughs> he has got uh, very old customers as well let's have it like that okay so i have created four groups underneath you have uh, different peoples okay different age ages and i have created category for it just once you're done just click on age group column just press ok so that will create one new column here i mean you see like bin of values is that symbol itself different now i want to analyze uh, instead of age i want to analyze with age group let me put this chart i want age group the same item quantity now you see now you can see from the chart that is most of his uh, purchases happened by you his youth customers and followed by uh, elderly people so if we create uh, bin of values or age group or grouping of values like this he can clearly foresee what is his customer base i hope uh, you guys like this video with the column delimited column right comma delimited column and that cell into multiple rows basically like uh, it's not a comma delimited file basically you have one column in that you have uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, columns like multiple data with comma separated let's try to see it so you have uh, data here like for this employee he has access to ng123, ng124, ng125. That is delimited column, right? I mean, a comma delimited column. Now, uh, uh, a column with delimited values. Maybe I can rename it like that. That value to be changed it to here, right? Uh, for this employee, it has to be converted into rows. That is ng123, 124, 125. That is the ultimate. So if you are looking how to change it just continue watch this video if you're new to this channel hit the subscribe button right now to learn the tricks in power bi so we have understood uh, what we are going to do today and uh, let me uh, explain when we need to use such scenarios so using a data like this when we have a data like this there is nothing but um, for these employees he should have access to only these products let us try to understand this model you have a sales data dim date and product so these are the different products you have ng123 45 till 132 and these are the employee tables naga kumar sayed and mahesh you have these things now there is a new table this is not related anywhere over here where you are getting like uh, for the email for each email that is the user here okay he is getting these three products these three products he should have access one two three four so sometimes we will receive data like this one record per employee and what are the different uh, products he can able to access one so while you using login to uh, this particular user he can able to see only his products so this is the ultimate aim we will get used to get this data it may be any other scenarios as well but uh, just for your understanding uh, i'm explaining the security access scenario so once you receive this so you cannot join these products with this right because you need to have a single value in your column so that you can join it but using this you cannot join it so we need to replicate each time i mean how many products he has magesh has uh, four uh, access four products access so magesh has to repeat four times for each products so in order to do that it is very quick trick we are already aware of that is split and using unpivot these are the two items we need to do to get the desired result so split column by delimiter you use comma so first step is to split by different uh, 
products so in this case instead of choosing uh, the four uh, columns and uh, you choose uh, unpivot uh, columns i would like to prefer choose the email and choose unpivot other columns this is more safer because now mahesh has got four uh, products access in future some other employee will get five to six products access as well so this will be split to six columns so if you choose these four products other two columns will be ignored so it's always better to choose email then click on unpivot other columns so if it can be a four or five or any other products you, the user get access a number of columns it get generates no issues for you. you this always works unpivot other columns clicking on email will work perfectly all right now this has given you see for naga three products for mortgage one two three four so four products he got records so this column we can get rid of remove now we can rename it as product access so how to give a product access that will be a separate video but to demonstrate uh, this quick trick like uh, converting um, uh, value in a column the comma uh, delimited values in a column to multiple rows that is the objective of going to see about what is enter data and what kind of data can be stored in enter data option if you are uh, started working on Power BI, you can be familiar with this. Like enter data is used to store a table of contents, and um, people are uh, so much confused with it. Right? Uh, you can copy paste entire data. So why you want uh, source just um, data as well? Let's try to understand uh, this conflict. I mean, uh, to clarify what kind of data can be stored in enter data in this video. If you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button right now to learn the concepts in Power BI. Let us try to check what is enter data. So when you are in uh, Power BI, like uh, uh, let us try to understand this simple model. Uh, like we have uh, subject and student, student marks. That's it. So three um, uh, tables. Uh, let me move this one and let us try to get rid of all these columns so that it will be clean so now i have a student uh, let me use this uh, headers once again i just imported i didn't model we have a students and you have a subject match english science and for each uh, subject what is the mark for each student this is the one so whether can I store these three data is coming from the uh, database or Excel. Okay. Can I store this one in the enter data? Yes, you can. But what happens? It gets updated. So any data that is getting updated or requires uh, some insertion, uh, then you should not put it in the enter data. But for your analysis, it's a one-time analysis. The data is not going to change in your local system. For your analysis, you can obviously you can go and uh, do enter data. What happens is like when you choose enter data, the entire student marks. Let us copy it from here. Uh, I have um, data stored in Excel. So like over here, copy it and put it over here right so when I use this one this is stored here statically uh, now let me show it to you so now you can see these tool records it's from a table uh, we can name it as enter static okay now I copied and pasted here okay and I got the data now what happens here in student marks I have uh, something uh, new here now whenever there is an update to this uh, data uh, any insertion or deletion say for example for Naga I will change its marks to uh, 65 and assuming Mahesh has not attended uh, the science uh, subject th two amendments I will make it now so that changes it may not be always uh, incremental like increasing the records it can be existing records also can be modified so it was wrongly entered now I saved it 
okay now you can see this static uh, contains naga 80 and mahesh signs the twelve records student marks it's reading from excel okay naga m 80 and uh, mahesh is still there now once i refresh uh, this table okay refresh all let us go for refresh all it will take a minute because uh, my system is little slow now you can see that mahesh has went away i mean the and the naga data is updated here whereas the entire static it's still there there are 12 records over here the data is not changed so any data that has ability to change okay uh, then you should not store it in the entire data that is the thumb rule one now what kind of data can be stored let's try to see this one uh, here I can say like uh, remove rows remove blank rows that's fine and now what kind of data can be stored is like I want to calculate the grade for it so grade is like uh, I have uh, Excel here in the grade based on the marks like it, it is from 0 to 40 then uh, is F grade if it is above 90 he is A plus okay and this data is not going to change in the near future or any updation this is the thumb rule or threshold uh, for any uh, marking system this is not going to frequently change maybe after some uh, 10 years 20 years they may revisit this but this is not going to change at any cost of time these kind of state data can be stored as a entered data that is static values so that we can able to calculate the grade based on the marks comparison so let us go for it enter data even this uh, i would suggest after 10 years it may change right so people will get confused but for giving an example to understand what kind of data can be stored something should be static and that should be used for internally in power bi calculations those kind of data can be stored in enter data that is what i want to make so this is a great calculation table let us keep this one so how to calculate uh, based on this uh, student marks to create that is a separate uh, story i mean i can take uh, in another video but to understand it the enter data should be stored in power bi for static values that should not require any updation if at all any updation required once you publish this report in power bi server you need to download it and then you need to edit it manually so either you can enter data here or in the power bi desktop in the reporting layer this will do the same create new table by typing or pasting right now we have uh, one table here let us try to do one over here i think i didn't apply any changes like grade 2 when you click on load because i already loaded see now you can see another table created so just uh, in power bi desktop also it is just simulating a power query okay so it's giving an option over here in the uh, reporting layer that's it so nothing else so just remember the ch the data should not change and some kind of uh, you need to have some kpis you need to calculate 0 to 30 is uh, is okay 30 to 70 is uh, uh, progressed and 70 to uh, 90 is achieved something like that you need to calculate for calculation purpose you need to set some kind of thresholds or some values those values you can store it in enter data and store it that is what i want to convey in this video how to read multiple excel or any csv files in power bi using a power query or if you are looking for how to look through the folders to read multiple files this is the video for you we are exploring Power BI using a business scenario, uh, Naga Garments, and he is having three branches. And today we are going to learn this uh, looping concept using uh, one of these challenges. He is getting the sales data from each location on daily basis in Excel file, and he has to extract and report it in Power BI. So he needs some kind of automation 
so currently say for example he has uh, three locations right he don't have a POS each location they are maintaining the sales in Excel at the end of uh, the day people from uh, Chennai Bangalore Hyderabad whoever is in charge in this branches they are sending the Excel to the business owner and as a business owner he has to consolidate the things in a single file earlier and he is trying to find an easy way for it so what can be done in power bi so basically he can drop all the files in a single folder and there is a folder data source in power bi using that he can loop through all the files listed in that folder as well as in the subfolder then he can able to read it consider it as a single file and create as a single table in power bi for this to happen one of the prerequisite is like uh, the for all the files he is receiving from different places or different sources should have a same format meaning same column headers and the order of the column should be the same with this note let us try to explore this scenario in a demo so currently in power bi so we are said like excel so for that you should not go to excel here this is basically a folder source if you have a multiple files it can be a excel or csv or any other files okay and you want to loop through it you need to go to new source the source type is nothing but a folder so you see uh, option at the all itself when you click on file also it will appear so it is folder click on connect and navigate through the path let me copy this path i'm having uh, it here so let us press ok when i click on that folder you immediately see the list of files available in that folder okay so it doesn't matter uh, what files it is so i gave this path this video 18 in this you have these uh, csv files i need to read but if you see here along with the csv that is i mean uh, xls file uh, it also listed my powerpoint file that is whatever i opened here okay as well as here you see the text file i don't find any text file here but you see here inside this folder i have this text file so when you keep at the top folder it will go inside your subfolders as well and try to get all the files inside this main folder okay keep this note and now what we need to do whether we can ignore anything uh, over here if you have only the listed files here then you can use combine option but i need to ignore unwanted files that's why i want to go to transform data so now we have all the files listed now either i can do like uh, i can go for filtering un uh, unwanted files I can use the extension .xls, but I would say that is not a preferable way to filter because in this folder, if you have another XLS file added with that contains a different format, okay? Instead of sales, you put you try to calculate some calculations or uh, some other format. If you have dropped in this folder, as you see all files, it will pick it up. That will confuse you or mess up with your existing flow so better to filter based on the name the fall the naming convention follows like this right so go for text filters contains sales underscore so it it is prerequisite right uh, you you need to request the source system whoever providing this file with specific format of naming convention as well as the data inside your excel so I'm saying if the data contains or begins with sales underscore, then give those files alone. Now I filtered it. Okay. 
the next step I need to do is you see what are the things it has fetched. It has fetched the metadata of your file. So data access, when it is modified, when it is created and modified and uh, what is the folder path. This is my folder path. Okay. So I don't want uh, other columns uh, except uh, this name column. So let us try to remove other columns. Remove columns. I selected it. Now I have this data here. Either I can go here and uh, say what I want from this column. And before that step, I want to extract the location since I am aware of about uh, this data. So this does not contain any location information inside your column, I mean inside your data. So I want to extract these locations so that I can use it as a filter in my analysis. So I want this data. So let me do quick transformation. So what I want? I want a Bangalore, right? So I need to duplicate this column. Let us uh, duplicate it. Then get this uh, location name. For that, I need to remove this uh, first um, five columns. I can go for split. Split column, split by delimiter uh, left mouse each occurrence of a delimiter underscore let us do that so that I will get uh, remove this one even I can uh, get the date from this column so Bangalore is one and uh, your date is there in the date should not have dot XLS so replace so replace values find dot XLS. So it is not in my case, it is uh, having the data like this. Based on your data over here, you need to do appropriate uh, transformations. Now I can change it to data type to date for this. So you now you can see this is 1st of Jan, 2nd of Jan, like that. Okay, now. This is prerequisite, I mean, uh, just for your, I mean, it's not a prerequisite. What I'm trying to say is, if you extract the, uh, some metadata or uh, categorical value from your file name, you can use it as a filter. So this acts as my location. Then this is my date. Now you can expand these files. So click on this content. So click on the data. So this is what uh, I have. I mean, uh, I think I uh, have location inside the data as well. That's fine. Just for your understanding, I have explained it. So click on this data and you see is either this is fine. Then click on OK. So this will expand my all my data. You see like uh, it come from uh, uh, other uh, fields as well. So here a quick thing I want to highlight. So we were in this step. So after clicking on it, all these steps are created by uh, Power BI automatically when you click on this. So let us try to navigate one by one. So when you go here, it is filtering the hidden files then it is invoking some custom function when you see from difference between this step and this step it has internally created one table okay so if you see this table it is trying to fetch data for each file this is a file name it is passed and getting that data in a single table if you click on this this is the data for this particular file this is the data for this particular file okay so here I can go and expand myself, okay? So I will remove these steps. Hey there, if you are not having a custom uh, columns, uh, as I mentioned here, uh, I mean, I need to have these columns, okay? 
if you click on content directly it will remove all other columns it will uh, try to expand it what I'm trying to do is I want these two columns that I derived from the file so that's why I am going step by step now I go and uh, expand the request required columns here so I need uh, you ignore this one I want receipt number I don't want location I can use location from there I choose select columns whichever okay let me select uh, item amount item quantity this is enough now along with the extracted column that is uh, name content location you also get the data for your file so this is the January 1st file this is the data for it you can see the January 2nd file the data differs okay I hope uh, you guys understand this uh, let me delete uh, uh, then you can remove whatever columns you don't want and based on this column also you can analyze and this is the data for that particular date so you can derive such a things it's a kind of quick automation uh, like instead of uh, this operation if you do not have a folder what happens is like you need to manually append all the data uh, in a single file daily daily so now once you close and apply daily when you refresh whenever the file is added here if you consider after these six files four files are added here refreshing will automatically perform this all these operations automatically so it's a very good kind of a simple automation now at the end you will get a single table so it is uh, video 18 i mean <laughs> i need to rename it so i can rename it as uh, sales daily something like that so i can do that see now it is reading hyderabad each file it's okay let us quickly try to rename it here i can rename it here sales daily so now you see here you have only uh, one table i have uh, did nothing i used a folder option then i choose some formatting i mean i did some transformation then you got all your data in a single table i hope data preview in power query actually this is not a new feature it exists uh, for long but uh, we are taking it for the very first time in case of power query so what are those uh, column quality profile and distribution as you can see like these are the different things you can uh, analyze or uh, as soon as you import the data in power query this gives you uh, overall idea about how much uh, the data quality it contains right so let us try to check it out deeply in this video let us head over to the power bi now as soon as i imported this table i have this um, table over here which contains different columns and after doing some quick uh, load you can see some of the uh, column contains some error one such example is sales date it says like less than one percentage of uh, data contains the error so let us go to any other uh, column it contains error so uh, i think cost amount again it says like uh, one percentage of error let us see what is this error now you can see this uh, particular uh, value which is having 15 15 2016 which is nothing but um, some data is entered wrongly which uh, there is no month uh, with the value of uh, 15 so this was the actual error now using this is not the uh, ultimate aim of this video but what i'm trying to say is as soon as you enter uh, into this um, uh, imported you can see this error statements but apart from this what kind of validations you can do using this data preview go to the view and choose data preview here you see the data preview options like first thing we will explore column quality what values it will give it will give you how many records in this column 
having a hundred percentage valid values and here you can see in this less than one percentage having error and uh, for each column it displays the same thing like another column which is having error also contains less than one percentage of value and we can see here uh, for each column there is the one option is valid and uh, the remaining two is error and empty and empty is what we need to discuss about so empty is something if you do not have any values like nulls blanks it will be counted as empty i think it is uh, null right it is not even uh, blanks we will check it out but this will give you how many values are empty so as soon as you just see this uh, snapshot you can understand these are the important column but it is containing uh, no values or empty values these many rows so doing analysis based on more than 50 percentage empty values doesn't make sense that information you will get let's go to next option column distribution so this will give you uh, the distinct values and the unique values so the distinct values are uh, nothing but um, list of um, uh, um, values right i mean distinct uh, unique values the, till this time what i'm trying to say is i remember like both are same distinct and unique values but there is a slight difference distinct means how many number of distinct values in it and unique means how many values appeared only once in this column like in this it's a customer so there are two customers appeared only once that is what a unique says right and uh, distinct means there are total nine distinct customers that is what the difference let us try to uh, understand with uh, some other uh, uh, column uh, example and here you have a customer name as i mentioned there are uh, nine distinct values and two unique customers and uh, what other column it contains let us try to check it out um, we have just seen this column ignore about it and uh, i'm trying to explain it uh, the uh, distinct and unique with some simple example like here right so here you have three distinct meaning you have three distinct value to the drop down you can see that these are the different values appearing so which is three distinct values one unique means some value appeared only once so which one let us try to check it out by um, clicking on um, only the on shop now and whether we will check which one is uh, appeared only once so whether on shop is appeared once no and offline yes so this is appeared only once you can see only one record so this is what the core difference between the distinct and unique values so this information will be provided when you go to the last option column profile it will give you the overall summary like it will give you the column quality and uh, column distribution along with the some other values right so based on the data type it will give some more information like this is the text it gives minimum maximum and when you click on some uh, numerical values um, let me check it out it contains some errors so let us go for another column so here you can see the total records empty unique distinct and minimum maximum value along with the standard deviations everything it will give you and what are the different values present and for that each shot how many records for that value that also appearing here i hope uh, you are clear about uh, these concepts about um, column quality column distribution column profile which will give you a quick overview of your data and uh, based on that you can decide whether to proceed for modeling or any other reporting purpose this channel contains a free content worth a thousand dollar or sound five thousand INR. So kindly use this uh, free content available to you, which covers SSIS, SSAS, and Power BI, as well as those who are looking for career guidance, job change. I have a separate playlist for them as well. So please utilize this content, share this channel with friends and colleagues, so that someone will be utilizing these contents.
how to handle nulls or blanks in power query if your data is having nulls or blank you may encounter some different uh, behavior if you do some kind of uh, condition and check in power query so let's try to see what are the different issues you can face and how to handle it let's jump into a demo if you are new to this channel hit the subscribe button right now to learn the concepts in power bi We have a data set here, a simple data set that is using a customer. Like customer is having a data, I mean, whose region is available. And we have a um, phone number. So uh, whatever example I'm going to quote, it's not a real business scenario. Just for demonstration purpose, I just want to highlight some of the issues over here. So basically, like you see here, the data contains, the customer region column contains both uh, blanks. This is blank. You see there is no data. Here also there is no data. And you have uh, null data over here. So if you want to do comparison, what are the columns having values? Or what, which columns are blank? Or I mean, which doesn't have actual value. In that case, if you use some uh, uh, is null, this two will be skipped. This two will be considered as um, uh, values. So these two will not be available here. I mean, you will not get the result. Let us try to uh, uh, do uh, create one new query. I mean, custom column. In that, we will try to see. So we want to find if the column contains a null value or not so the customer region equals blank okay so this is the thing and if customer equal to null then it is one else it is zero let us see what happens it's saying some issue let us see what it is i think we need to wrap it around uh, bracket uh, i put o here it should be zero okay now you can see here for this it resulted uh, one 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 so if you do the sum of this we can get the value like uh, how many blank rows but here you can see this value is still calculated as a value so you need to have a special treatment so basically either you convert all the blanks to the um, null so you don't know whether what value exists you see clicking on here whether it's a space or uh, other values so either you convert all the blanks to the null then you can do the calculation that is one of the issue you need to take in care so in this case let us go for um, replace values first um, we will replace values with null so now when you do that uh, there is no change here so let us try to trim it and then do the replace so replace value should not come here what i'm trying to say is you don't know whether it's a space or empty or whatever tab contains so it's better to trim the data first so after this column i'm trimming the data then you replace the values with the uh, null okay now it is empty empty should be replaced with null now you see for both the things it came as null so this is what i'm trying to convey now this add custom value should not be appearing here it should be here so we will get the value for this one as well so whichever uh, column i mean for this whichever row having a blank values or empty value doesn't contain actual value it will prompt you one so this should be your ideal check and i want to find uh, another scenario i'm trying to explain is like what issues you will face when you have a blank or null values in this case it's purely based on the null values like when you want to have uh, if your text should contain o right if your uh, search string contains o that is if you are trying to do some conditional check 
and in that column you have some blank values then what happens let us try to add another query or another conditional column so here what I'm trying to search is if this customer region contains text O so say for example south and north I want to find this for west it should return uh, category others so if it contains the text O it should return me a category 1 otherwise it is others let us try to write that one here I will say category I'm going to derive this column so if so the formula is like uh, the customer region text dot contains this is the function to search it is similar to SQL uh, contains function so here it says text and what string to search so I will say O search for O in the customer region if it is uh, true then return me category 1 otherwise return me others there you go I think there is issue let me close this one okay now you see there was an error uh, when you have whenever you have uh, null values right so basically you need to have a clean uh, data over here so you can either you can go and uh, replace uh, errors with uh, others so you see replace uh, error with others this is one way of doing it but proper way of doing uh, you need to understand what happened here so basically if you do a conditional check if the value contains uh, null over here we can check it the formula once again uh, if the text contains if the logical condition the null value is uh, verified the null value will not return true or false okay null is null so that is why it is failing so what need to done is like I will remove this column instead of um, writing such a case I will add new column so instead of uh, writing uh, old formula on top of that I need to check uh, another if condition here if if the customer region is equal to null then you do it as others okay else you do all these checks right so if the customer region is null then make it as others first of all you check that condition if it is null then make it as others else you do whatever actual functionality you want to achieve so this is what we did here so it is again asking else if then else okay let me check what is the issue so this is fine now we have we have achieved the expected results so these things you need to be carefully handled so even uh, whatever we did earlier like uh, the old formula you can replace with error uh, that is absolutely fine but you need to understand if you have a blank or nulls you need to handle it properly what is query folding in power bi this is specially an uh, option in Power Query and it is the inbuilt behavior of uh, Power Query. This is the concept behind how Power Query works. Let us try to understand what is query folding is. If you see the definition, the query folding is the ability of Power Query query to generate a single query statement to retrieve and transform source data. Basically, Power Query will generate a query, right? That query should retrieve and transform the source data. So, you are having a single table that you appointed in the Power Query, and you will do different transformations. It can be addition of a column, or removal of column, changing data types, or sometimes group by. So, each step you are doing. So, whether particular step 
can be query folder or not certain operations the meaning like all these steps that you are doing all the operations or transformation you are doing that can be done or push it to the source system that is what the query folding is if it is not pushed to the source system then that particular operation has to be done by the power query engine that is mashup engine that is the logic behind it so let us try to see what is the advantages or importance of query folding so when you have a import mode data refresh will take place efficiently when you have a query folding so it will be very quick in case of direct query and dual storage mode tables each direct query and dual storage mode table must be based on power query query that can be folded so obviously when you have a direct query and dual storage mode it should be query folded that is the one of the thumb rule another thing is like incremental refresh incremental data refresh will be efficient in terms of uh, resolution resource utilization and refresh durations so if you have query folded then incremental refresh will be there then also it will throw some warning if it is not uh, query folded if you see notify you warning should it determine that query folding for the table cannot be achieved so the query folding is this much important let us try to understand if you are still not uh, aware or understand about query folding how to check whether my query is folded or not how i can check let's see it in a demo if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification. We are in Power BI and uh, Power Query, where I have uh, three different sources. So you need to understand the query folding is mostly related to SQL related databases. And for non SQL related data sources, the query folding option is won't be available. What I'm trying to say first of all where you can check the query folding let us take this example sales data db1 which is nothing but coming from this uh, database naga store and this is the data behind this so we have uh, data for uh, naga store in the database so that is what we have pointed in the power query now you can see this data so when you point this particular table what happens it is pointing the source and navigation so that's it you are not doing any of the transformation how you know that this query is query folded or not meaning power query no need to do any transformation it will directly get all your push your transformations to the source how you will know so where to check here is a option you have a gear button here right click it and you can see option called view native query when this option is enabled then this query can be folded that is the power query engine will throw all your queries towards the source so you can see this is the query generated by the power query engine and this can be fetched from the source system itself when you go here i have another source that is uh, from the um, uh, adventure works that is free salesperson now you can see here this is the view i have pointed to so you can see v salesperson or uh, some tables over here okay that is fine so i pointed it here you can see the source this is from adventure works different source now when i go here and check this option is disabled meaning like this particular step uh, this particular transformation cannot be pushed to the source system it has to be done at the power query layer so as much as you can push towards your source system your power bi will be very much efficient so when we go back one step here renamed column when you right click here this query can be folded meaning like this particular step is can be pushed to the power uh, bi the power bi can push to the sql source so from till this step it will push to the source and then this step has to be done by the power query engine so now you can see like what are the you need to identify what kind of steps 
that can be pushed or what kind of transmission that can be pushed to the source that is the main objective of it then now you can see this split column by delimiter instead of this if you have right and you have a control to the source system and you instead of pointing directly to the table you can write the views and then from the view you can split the column and create the derived column so we have seen two examples one is sql without any uh, transformation and uh, sql with some sort of transformation that is uh, not letting your query to be folded now when it comes to the non sql source you can see here uh, the this the first step the navigation step you can see the way view native query this is from excel so for non excel related or non sql related uh, sources the query folding concept is not applicable and the power bi manages it internally so that is what uh, it can be o data feed or some other non sql any non sql related the query folding is not possible or i mean i'm not sure about it but the query folding for sql wherever it's possible you push towards your source instead of writing getting from the table you can use the views that is what the important concept let us try to do some operations then we will see what operations blocking our um, query folding now let us try to remove certain columns here remove columns let us see whether it can be folded now you can see view native query so now what happened it has removed the column it is not doing anything this is fine now we will try to change this uh, data type uh, let us try to change a date now what happened now you can see here the view native query is gone so certain steps will you can identify this can be done at the source level itself so now when you changing a data type in the power query it is very easy for you to change but it is not performant efficient so instead of that you write a view in that view you can change this data type that is the best practice this is fine let us go to the documentation part of uh, query folding now this is the official page of microsoft where you can see the definitions and uh, we will quickly go through what kind of operations that can be folded transformation that can achieve folding remove columns renaming filtering grouping expanding record columns then non fuzzy merging appending foldable queries based on same source when you do union all based on the same source then query can be folded adding custom columns with simple logic as we see like some columns like year of order date and you can add uh, one uh, column one plus column two you, if you add uh, these two columns then it can be folded let us try to see uh, adding a column custom column sales amount okay then addition of uh, profit okay now in this case what happened see still it can be code um, folded so you need to check each step okay this is fine then transformation that prevent folding so when what transformation you should avoid merging queries based on different sources if it is different so you you might confused like uh, when you have different sources i need to merge when the query is not folding what i should do you should go for merging because i'm not saying like uh, you each query you should worry if it is not query folding it's a bad practice but the you you need to avoid such a case like uh, if there is a possibility of avoiding the query is not folding you can able to fold it then you can go for it that is what i'm trying to make it here so appending between different sources adding custom columns with complex logics so like this when you convert to text for the date then it will not fold so these kind of uh, things you can avoid so how to determine as i told just right click on a step and just view native query and as i mentioned before this native query option is only available for certain relational db and sql generating connectors it does not work for o data or for excels as we see 
the query diagnostic future is the best way to see what folding has occurred in a non-SQL connectors. So if you want to see whether query folding occurred, you can go for query diagnostic features. I hope uh, you understand the concept behind the query folding. This is a quick trick on how to change existing data sources. That is, you have a file and from file A, you want to change it to file B. If it is a case like this, and this is the video field. It is the same case applicable to instead of a database, if you want to connect to database A to database B, then just continue watching. Usually when you want to import, you will say get data or Excel, right? So once you've done it and you build the dashboard, now you want to change from file A to file B. Where to do it? There's something like transform data. Usually we'll go for transform data. Instead, you see an option like data source settings. Just click on that. And it will prompt you your uh, list of uh, data sources in your uh, Power BI. So you see like uh, this is the file I used that is DAX. I want to change this one. So click on change source. There you go. So now instead of this file, I want to choose uh, my file, this one. Okay, I dumped some more data in this. So just press OK. That's all. So when you choose OK, then do close it okay then you press apply changes now you see I dump some data for June July and other months so let's see how it reflects now it's trying to load the data from my new file once it's loaded it will refresh with new data I dump some more data so that's why it's taking a while once it loads, let's see it, boom. See, now we got uh, data for other months since I have changed my data in a new file. So this is as simple as that like, and this applicable is uh, same as for your data base as well. So this is file, if it is a database, if you click on that option, then change source, then that will prompt you to change data source for database. Instead of database A, you can choose database B or whatever. How to change Excel source to database tables in Power BI? Or if you are looking for how to change existing connection type in Power BI, then this is the video for you. So currently we have this report. Now we have created this report earlier that is using YTD 16, 17, 18 and we don't have data for 19. So assuming uh, this particular um, report has created from an Excel source. So let me show it to you. Now you see here, this is uh, V13 MTD, QTD, YTD, XLSX. So this report is created based on the Excel file. Okay, entire report. Now let me show the data for it. So from the Excel, I'm getting the sales data as well as product master. And this uh, dim date is derived in the M query. Okay. I'm not sure about uh, this table. Let me delete it. <coughs> That's fine. So, so let's hit that one. Okay. This is fine. So now these two tables, I want to replace it with the database. And this is uh, uh, is derived from mcode as I told before. So how to do that? And this is not the video like if you want to change to different um, source file. I mean to say instead of uh, this file, you want to change it to another file. You can do it here, right? If you go to the change source, then what will happen? Let us see that. So when you click on this, it will prompt you to change another file. 
see there is no option even i go to advance there is no option to convert it as a database source basically this option works fine like when you want to change this source file that i have created a separate video for it so basically we are not supposed to do that so where we need to change the existing connection type to another connection type that is source type itself for that we need to go to as usual power query so in power query editor we have uh, these two tables right let me show the code for uh, sales so for that you can click on advanced editor click on that sales and go to advanced editor you will find the code here so source equal to excel source and you do lot of transformation here similarly for product master also you have some code it is again it is from the excel source and lot of transformation i mean some kind of transformation you did if you see the dim date it is uh, written it in um, database i mean m query the code is itself written over here okay this is the internal table of power bi that's fine now heading back to our topic i want to re replace these two tables from the excel into database instead of directly changing it to excel i mean database uh, by uh, replacing it here what i need to do is actually i need to replace this code okay the entire code not this one so the sales table entire code okay but i am very poor in writing um, m query i mean people can't write exactly the by replacing all the columns here what i would like to suggest is that let us try to get these two tables from the database and we'll create a two new tables okay then let's see what how can we replace this entire content we will take the content from the new tables created and replace it here so that our work becomes simple let us do that so i will go to new source sql server assuming uh, my new source or uh, replacing source is uh, database put my server name and i am not don't want to use uh, give the database here if you know the database just to provide that otherwise in my next step i'm going to give that database name so here i will get a list of uh, database in this uh, server so that is my naga store I expand this uh, database so when you expand it it will list you the list of tables i want these two tables okay so let us click on this and click okay so now we got these two tables sales data and product table so what code it has generated let us see this so now you see the code for the database is like source sql database it's from server and you are pointing it to with schema and the table name that's it so what we need to do whether we can take the entire script from here and replace it here no hold on basically you need to check all the data types are correct see in this one sales abc abc is a text and session id is numeric sales date is date so all these data types over here should have a same data type here i mean see the session id is uh, text here sales date is text here so whatever you are going to replace right you ensure that uh, the code it generates should also have a same data type what will happen if the data type changes because here based on this sales table you have created some ytd mtd calculations all the things will collapse okay so while getting the new source ensure the data type in your old table and the new table is same now let us try to change the data types for these two and uh, this is nothing but um, change type whole number and i want uh, this sales date uh, to be um, date okay now th this looks fine okay now let me take this script okay 
then go to sales instead of excel source okay the entire content take the entire content replace it with your database okay now you are done so this particular excel source is replaced with database what about product master product master is still it's loading i mean this is your product master then take the entire script here let us try to see the cash price is uh, not numeric see here this is numeric okay i mean sorry cost price is numeric let us try to change the type to whole number okay now you take the script of product now instead of this excel source uh, query i'm replacing with the database source query now you are done this is good so now you have these two tables um, from the database so do we need these two no need either you can delete it or uh, for reference purpose or file troubleshooting you need it just right click and uh, enable load to uh, uncheck it so that it will not load in your power pivot i mean power view so let me uh, uncheck the enable load so these two tables product product sales data won't be loaded so these three tables will be loaded so now once i click um, close and apply so the changes uh, will get applied now you see the loading data and uh, now you have uh, these many rows and you see this is from the database okay now the data in the database earlier in the navigator this report we had data till 2016 17 18 2019 it is empty now in the database i have populated 2019 data as well let us try to see the data okay now there you go see 2018 16 17 i have data okay uh, in what scenarios uh, you will use this one it's like um, you initially develop uh, for a proof of concept using excel or csv files and in uh, production environment you need to go in different source system it can be a database or sharepoint anything so in those scenarios you need to follow these steps this is point number one another prerequisite is like and or i can say it's an advantage of is like you do not do any changes here right you have already created lot of uh, modeling here you create a number of measures uh, over here so once you have the same table name or uh, the um, column names and you no need to create anything new here so that is one of the important thing you need to consider right if you change the table name in the source i mean instead of sales you say like uh, sales uh, transaction table then this won't work right entire thing will collapse so ensure that all these things are prerequisite how it, basically it, how it works is like in the power pivot right i mean in the power uh, bi world this modeling part is called a power pivot right for the power pivot power query gives the source Okay. in the source and there is a uh, in between power query and uh, power pivot there is a layer right it requires only the column name the power pivot so whatever in the source system it can be excel or um, it can be sharepoint that is handled by power query so for power pivot it requires the column reference and the table name so that is a thing i want to highlight with this note I hope uh, you guys like this video and you learned uh, how to change the uh, source source type. And share and subscribe to the channel. Comment below for your queries. Column from example option in Power BI Power Query. This option exists for long, but most of uh, us are not familiar with it because we are tend to write the coding. This is very useful in terms of those who don't like coding in order to derive a column from an input column 
and you don't know how to code it. Instead, you start typing how you want your output. So Power BI will write code for you, that is M query, and give you the new derived column. That is about column from examples. Let us check it out how it works in this video. If you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification. Let's begin. We have uh, Power BI now and I have uh, three columns. For each column, I want to derive it as a new column. And first column, I what I want is, I don't want to be concatenated that uh, it's the uh, first three characters are um, country code and next is your uh, number. So what I need is like, I want space in between the country code and the numbers. So what you need to do is go to your, click on that column, go to add column and column from examples. This is the option. So you need to type how you need your output. So this is what I want. I want IND then 918. That is my expected output. So as soon as you keep giving the inputs to the, uh, I mean, uh, how your output should look like for the input, Power BI will predict. Now you can see it has predicted for other records, but it is something wrong. So you start giving some more input. So that, uh, I mean, uh, not the input, the output, how you are expecting for some more records. Now it has predicted perfectly all right. So this is what column from examples will do. Once you are ensure it is working perfectly all right, then click on OK, then go ahead and rename the column. Country, uh, whatever, right? That's fine. Let us leave it for custom one. <coughs> this is fine. Forget about the naming. Now, this case, again, what I need is like, I just need the only the numbers right i don't want any other uh, things and i have did it be, uh, before in uh, my previous video using a split column by uh, using some other options but this is for demonstration you can do any any method you can choose and now i'm going by this method now column from examples i need only the numerical values from here what i need to do use charts start typing 982 and 7474 bear with me it's a long number and um 94 and 728 that's it okay now the same number same record exists so it predicted and it displayed the record as soon as you start typing for other records what happens next let us see there you go. Now it has predicted the value correctly and you got the results. And let's check it out the formula it has uh, written, right? This is for previous thing for this custom visual. Now the formula for this is like text start combined, text start start. So first three characters, then give the space, then text start middle after three characters, it has combined it, right? So this is how it has written the code. Even I'm not sure about these functions. I never used uh, some of the functions. Uh, recently I'm trying using the custom, I mean columns from examples. So it is a good way to learn M query as well. So for this example, this is fine. The recent example to extract only the numbers. What is the code? It can be complex. No, it's so simple. You can see it's a single <laughs> liner. Text that select uh, ID proof. 0 dot dot 0 0.09 you can see how simple the code is for this we need to write lot of complex logic you need to replace this one find a space so the logics you write is become very complex instead you try with this option if it gives you a simple query then this will be more performant efficient now let us uh, have the one last example from this so this is basically a date and we can change it to uh, change type to date time uh, because it contains uh, some timing attributes then you can change it to date now here 
you need to get some format like 23-4-2021. What is this day all about, right? So 23-4-2021 is uh, a Friday and you start typing it. I mean, you want to concatenate, you create one column that gets a day of this particular um, date, right? Then what you need to do? Let us go by column from examples, from selection. I want Friday, Friday, this is Friday. You should know what is the day. You start typing it Friday, comma, uh, let's say 23, right? Friday 23rd. Then you can say this is um, Saturday and comma 24. That's it. See? It has written the code for me that is 26th is Monday and this is 24th is again Saturday. So you start typing it the expected output power BI power query will return a query for you. Let's try to check it out this formula. You can see the formula it has written. You need to understand it. Just combine the value. Always it is trying to get the different values. Then after that it is trying to combine using text.combine. That is the thing you need to understand. I hope this video is helpful. Uh, those who are not willing to write or uh, those who are not interested to write um, uh, <laughs> basically you do not find the uh, time or you find very difficult to write the coding then you can use this option it's a very fantastic feature in power query where i'm going to talk about conditional column versus replace value recently one of the subscriber has commented in one of the video where he asked me why i am using conditional column instead of replace value that is what made me to do this video let me explain or answer his question by demonstrating the difference between the two. So this is in Power Query. Let us begin without further delay. So let us take one of the scenario here. We are in Power Query now. We have uh, this Naga Garments data set and you have these three locations. Now let me have this column here and uh, anyway let me duplicate this one for now to make a two uh, distribution i mean to say to identify the difference this i'm going to do with the replace and another one we will do it for conditional column what we are going to do we have this three location that is bangalore chennai and hyderabad and for these three location i will create the short form like for bangalore bank Chennai CHE and Hyderabad hide. So for this I'm going to use the replace value. So replace value I need to type three times Chennai and you replace it with CHE. So it does then again you do the replace value for Bangalore. Okay I will say bank. This is fine and again I will do for Hyder, Hyder, I think I'm typing its spelling correct, incorrect, Hyder, uh, bad. Maybe I'm wrong. Let us check it out. Yes, perfect. Now you can see Bank, Chennai and Hyderabad. So this has given me uh, the correct results. So I did filter something. Okay. So this has given me the correct results over here. Bank, Chennai, Hyderabad. This is fine. So what makes a difference here is like you someone already might noticed for each replace it has created one step. This is the first point I want to make. Let us hold this one for now and then we'll go to our another source and we'll do it. So I did a mistake here <laughs> already uh, I did it here. I mean I did the changes in data underscore two which is supposed to be replace but I did it here so let us uh, rename it as um, replace underscore one okay I cannot have same name here I'm going to use the conditional let us name it as conditional so now what I'm going to do let me create a new column called conditional split okay so add 
um, conditional column and I will repeat it uh, as you guys are aware of it so Chennai I will say Chen I will do it fast forward for you I will do it quickly as possible you get what I'm doing right now and location equals hide rabbit and here hide the main difference I see here let me press um, uh, the step ok and then I will try to explain again now one more thing I want to choose here is I can choose a location column again for the values that not matching any of this condition this is one of the key difference I found in the conditional column so now what I'm saying for Chennai you do this Ch Bangalore you do this Hyderabad you do this and if there is no matches if new data comes okay then you map that same column here okay that column is very important assume you are getting a Delhi here in future right then you will have a Delhi over here that is what it is location and um, or you can do some other uh, data over here right so now you can see uh, the key difference over here is like you have only one step in conditional column in case of replace for each item okay each item you have to do the replace so this is what the key difference and as I highlighted one more point here if there is no match in this condition you place the location right the same thing will happen in the replace if you are not replacing anything whatever new values come in Delhi if future it comes it will appear as such okay that is not a big difference okay that remains same the key difference is for each replace you have to do the multiple steps this is the performance impact whereas here it will be in a single step and it won't it will be performant more than your replace value and do note that if it contains more than 5 to 10 columns you will have a 10 replace functions whereas in conditional uh, conditional column you will have it in a single step so this will be the winner so you need to use the conditional split I hope uh, I answered uh, your question so always go for the conditional split if you have a uh, multiple cases to look for and then you should go for it replace value sometimes it will be a single value you need to replace uh, some errors hash NA are not available for those single value replacement or error rows uh, or error values you can go for replace this is what my suggestion is if Friends versus duplicate options in power query this request came in the comments session and i thought it is very interesting to me as well so i request you to do some more comments whatever topics you are interested in if you want to know just let me know in the comments so that i can prioritize and i will try to take it in upcoming videos so we are in power bi and let me go to power query so i am in transform data so we all familiar like we have data sets here you will import from different tables and there is certain times you want to duplicate a query or reference say for example duplication we do because uh, you need to get the different order type and name by group by columns in a different uh, column or dimensions uh, It can be any reasons, right? So in that case you may have a doubt whether I need to duplicate or reference What is the core difference between this? The first and foremost difference is that duplicate once you do it once uh, at the moment you do the duplicate of this particular table whatever in the current state when uh, and you press the duplicate the relationship between these two table is closed i mean there won't be further relationship between these two whereas the reference is always pointing to your table this is the core difference what i'm trying to say let's check it out in this demo now we have four steps here 
and let me delete uh, some of the columns and remove columns i am just changing the data type of this particular column now you can see here there are different steps over here and i will do the duplicate of this table now okay and i will rename it as pos dupe dupe for short okay duplicate then i will do the reference of this table now then i will say this one as reference okay now this is fine now what is the difference over here is like you see there are one two three four five six steps here these six steps are copied so in order to copy the steps whatever you have done mostly it is not as simple as this usually when you do a power query with some cleansing exercise there will be a lot of steps around 15 to 20 steps you have done and that step can be used for some other concept also or some other table same steps then in those cases you can copy or duplicate these steps right so this is why you will go for duplicate and as soon as you duplicate it there is no relation between these two okay relation in the sense the source this belongs to one table i mean this is considered as one table this is considered another table that's it what about reference when you see the reference it is always pointing to the source so there is no steps are copied it always points whatever steps applied in this source table will be also copied over here right i mean it's not a steps copied it is just pointing it's a pointer to the whatever source table it is that is what the core difference between duplicate and reference in order to understand it better now these six steps are copied and we have uh, just this one is a pointer to this table any changes you do it here i am deleting these two columns now in this any changes you do here the duplicated column will not have the two steps whereas you can see that will reflect in your reference table so now i'm deleting one more column here for understanding i'm deleting sales date here so sales date disappeared from here whereas in duplicate column it will still appear okay whereas in reference column the sale date is gone the duplicate when you did duplicate at we are at the sixth step right one two three four five six right change type so one two three four five six those six steps are retained there as soon as you duplicate it there is no connection whatever changes you do it will not reflect okay so when you will use it so basically like reference table when some steps are applied here and you are creating subset of it like uh, you for chennai and hyderabad and bangalore you create three different tables some of the steps you applied here should also reflect in some other reference table then you go for reference duplicate is just you copy hard coded work whatever you did you want to apply it for some other, again right maybe after applying it you come up through these two lists from here you need to get these two uh, tables or these two columns after applying all the uh, all possible combinations in those cases once you duplicate it then you do the uh, removal of these columns i mean to say like you apply 10 to 15 steps okay then you need only from that 15 steps applied you want to compare the two columns here right then you say like uh, uh you you want distinct values from that okay there, there can be different scenarios i'm saying so let us try to duplicate this duplicate and i want distinct values from this location column then you will delete all the rows okay then keep this one you say duplicate column so this will i mean not duplicate what i'm doing uh remove duplicate so this gives you a proper list this can be acting as a dimension or any other reference so this is how you need to do it right so this is the core difference between a duplicate and reference i hope you uh, understand the uh, the core concept behind that and one last point about the duplicate is like it consumes memory and when you do the reference it will not consume the memory it will always do a pointer but you have one of the option in power query called query dependencies 
and this option is most of us are not aware like if you have a different uh, sources um, connected to your power bi report and you need to know f from which table this is coming from right you have 20 to 30 tables and um, which is coming from database one database two and some of them from the files and you don't know and sometimes you are using uh, troubleshooting some issues you need to backtrack where it is coming from so this will help you in that situation let's check it out how to use this option if you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification. As the YouTube stat says, 60% of this uh, channel viewers are not yet subscribed yet, which will really motivate us to do more. With this note, let's begin. So we are in Power Query now and we have seen uh, one of the example uh, using um, pivoting. So this particular report uses um, how many source, right? If you someone asked you like that, you do not have option like you might have designed this report long back, you might have forgot it. So the, as soon as you want to find how many sources you have or from which source this particular table comes from, usually what people will do is like uh, you can go and check this is coming from database so this question for a particular table is fine but how many sources you are having in this particular report that is very difficult to find unless you scan all these tables but using this option over here like um, view query dependency you can quickly say like this particular report having two sources you can see a hierarchy over here let me zoom in so here at the top you have a different sources one is file and another is database i can zoom in now so as soon as you click on it what are the tables you have extracted from this source right that will be highlighted when you scroll little towards left from this file this is the file these two tables are used so this way you can able to identify the query dependencies whether it is from database it is from files or whatever how many sources you have connected to this particular report those sources will be at the top and their dependent tables appear over here so this is what um, query dependency all about this is really quick trick so this will be very useful to identify how many sources you are connected and you need to narrow down which table coming from which source right so this way it will be really helpful i hope now you are clear with the uh, topics related to power query and clear understanding about different options available in power query if you like this video hit the thumbs up button and comment below for queries do remember that data is your asset